and uh, next we have uh, Sonia Nelson, one of our very, very long-term associates and a very long-term student of my father as well, and she will be the next uh, speaker. Uh, Sonia is the director of uh, Vedic Chan Center in, the, in America, and she has been a student of Sir Desi Kachar for more than 40 years. So she came to meet my father first when I was still not born. <laughs> so <laughs> she knows my father before me, so we will invite her to be the next speaker. Yes. Thank you. Good evening. I am really very honored that Kalstrup has asked me to speak. so that I can share just a bit of um, my gratitude for the relationship that I have had for so many years with Sir. In order to do that, I have to begin a little bit with the history of how I came to have this relationship. Starting with my association with J. Krishnamurti and his teachings, through which my husband and I came to know that Deshikachar was teaching J. Krishnamurti. So my husband was also one of those responsible for bringing me to Madras in 1975 because he was the first one that was interested in studying yoga. When we arrived, I was just accompanying him. I didn't know what I was going to do for six months here. And we came to Sir's door and he said, well, what are you going to do <laughs> while your husband is studying? And in my kind of 31-year-old American way, I said, I don't know. Maybe I'll take some classes with your wife. I heard that she teaches. <laughs> and he said, you came to my door. I will teach you. First blessing of many. My husband had gone through many, many steps to be accepted as a student. And somehow, I just showed up and was invited in. That was just the beginning. Another person that I must acknowledge who had a, a great impact on how I can understand what a relationship with a teacher and a friend like Sir was and how how it functioned in the West, in America, was Mary Louise Skelton. I think many of you have heard of her. Mary Louise Skelton taught yoga at Colgate University. She had been a student of T. Krishnamacharya's. And when he, at some point, stopped teaching, she became Sir student. Her association with Colgate University and her husband's association, Bill Skelton, who was very uh, influential in the music department, were responsible for several very important things in Deshikachar's life. One was that his first trip to the United States came about when Mary Lou arranged for Colgate to invite him for a month-long program to teach the Colgate students. Out of that month-long program came the book Religiousness in Yoga, which eventually became the book known as Heart of Yoga, which I'm sure many of you have heard about and have seen and is used all over the world in yoga training programs, even if the training programs are not from this tradition. It is such an important book in the yoga world. 
they also started to bring Colgate students for five months period. I'm not going to say too much about that because tomorrow Kate Holcomb is going to speak about that from personal experience. They also, Bill and Mary Lou, went on one of the most important pilgrimages for Sir to Kailash. They organized and went with him to Kailash so that he could visit that place that was so important to Krishnamacharya. So I must acknowledge that connection. So over the years, every time that Sir came to the United States, initially he would come to Colgate University. And because of my long and very close relationship with Mary Lou, I was there most of those times. And I saw how um, she functioned in relationship to Deshikachar in many different contexts. And then eventually, after she passed, some of that role came to me when he would travel to the United States. So again, I've had this great blessing of seeing this extraordinary person in many, many different situations. As a student, as a student in individual classes, as a student in uh, big group seminars, um, as uh, an organizer for um, different, different functions and different workshops and trainings, and also uh, in that capacity, just traveling and taking care. You know, when you have someone who's so important come to teach, they must be cared for really well. But as much as I would try to care for him, one of the great qualities he had was that he would always be taking care of me at the same time. I would like to use some of his words to uh, convey some of the feeling that I have about our relationship. I remember one of the seminars in California, a model that he used, he used three words for the progression that one goes through in life and in the process of yoga. Inspiration, perspiration, transformation. So we always, in order to act, and if anything, Sir was always a person of action, which was inspiring to me. I had a little bit of, well, let me think about it. <laughs> that was my nature. And he really inspired me to act. He was really, um, what I observed, would, he was a multi-dimensional person, as all of us are. But what was unique about him is that many of us, we don't use the different dimensions that are available to us in our personality, in what we've been given in our svabhava. Sir explored everything, as you had just been hearing situations that were not necessarily easy for him, but he was always learning. This was such an inspiration for me. The perspiration part, hard work. He was always working, always studying, always caring for others from early morning till late at night till, you know, sometimes when I would be here and I would sit with him in the evening in his consultations, I could tell that you know he was tired, but it never really showed with the people that he was caring for. He was always asking about how they were, what was their difficulty, how he could help them. And he was always positive. You know how sometimes when you're tired, it's hard to be enthusiastic and positive. He would always say, just do this, do this practice. Something will happen. So that inspiration moved into this perspiration. I saw that you can't just be inspired. You have to do some work. You have to take steps, action. And then, after that, transformation. So for over 40 years, 
I have seen many changes. If I was 31 at the time I met him, and he was 30, we're five years different, so he was 37, something like that, 36. I, over the years, I saw the discipline he had in his work, in his study, in his practice, how it transformed him, how he became more and more comfortable in who he is, who he was, and how, as that happened, he was always encouraging me and his other students to be themselves, to transform, not to become something different from who they were, but to become who they were, to act from that space. So inspiration, perspiration, transformation. I brought several groups to Chennai, and uh, the title of our um, workshop one year was Transformation. In order to prepare the group, he didn't make a long list of, okay, you have to study this, you have to study that, this is what you should know before you came. He didn't do any of that. He wrote a poem. And, and faxed it to me. The fax, I think, was one of the greatest inventions for Sir. <laughs> you know, early on, we used to write letters, and we'd have to wait two weeks till he got it, and then another two weeks till he could write back. And when we had the fax machine, it was like instantaneous when it worked. Anyway, this poem I would like to share with you, and then I'm going to ask you to act please, by helping me to recite it. Sir felt that poetry should not just be spoken, but it needed to be recited. When it was just spoken, it was a little bit boring. But I'm going to say the word so you know it, but then we will recite it with some tones to it, OK? So here's, here's the poem that came in the facts. Transformation is the heart prevailing over the head. The source is the heart. The means is its dominance. The method is 123 Yoga Sutra. The need is Bandhana. The need is bandhana. The hope is the crescent. The crescent, the moon, the chain. So the, the method is Ishvara Pranidhana. As Sir, sometimes I want to share this with you. He translated Ishvara Pranidhana in America at times as remaining open. He knew his audience. There was not surrender in the audience, but remain open. Okay. So change, the hope is the crescent. Change is possible. So will you repeat after me? Okay. Transformation is the heart. Transformation is the heart. Prevailing over the head. Prevailing over the head. The soul is the heart. The source is the heart. The means is its dominance. The means is The method 
is one twenty-three. Yoga Sutra. The need is bandhana. The hope is the crescent. I spent many of my classes with him in the study of Vedic chanting. In fact, at one point he said to Mary Lou, she's crazy for Vedic chanting. But over the years, more and more, he became involved in Vedic chanting himself, which was great for me. He taught me so many things. And Vedic chanting, for me, is a yoga. It's definitely a yoga practice. But I have to tell you that You know, when, when somebody sees you, when somebody really can see who you are, it's the greatest blessing in life. He, he knew that my swabhava, my nature, was not in Vedic chanting. It was a yoga, a discipline, a great practice for me. But he knew that I, being Jewish, from the Jewish tradition, he would encourage me to chant in Hebrew. And he always felt that it was when I was chanting in Hebrew that my true nature was being expressed. So he appreciated all my, my study and the discipline of, and how good learning Vedic chanting was for me. But he always moved me especially in meditation, to connect somehow, not necessarily return to my Jewish roots, which I don't know if I really left at any time, but just to allow what was in, that, in me that was from that tradition to express itself. So I'm going to end with a chant that he often wanted to hear, and I feel that I would really like to do that chant in in this room, and so I feel like I'm going to do this for him, and I know that he's listening. This is a, um, a Hebrew chant that my mother taught me that praises and asks the king of the universe to rain down peace on all of us. So it's a Shanti chant, okay? So, for sir. Shalom Alechem. I have to start lower, sorry. Shalom Alechem.
Thank you so much, Sonia, for sharing this. Um, so I'm sure my father heard the chant, and thank you for blessing us in this space with the chant. Thank you so much.